Okay, so here I am with the Crossfire Pro plasma table again. I just cut two sheets just like this. I get my scrap from the scrap yard down the road for like 37 cents a pound or something. So I go up there and get like $900 worth of uh, sheet steel at a time. I've got this stuff in pallets out there, but it's great because it's cheap enough to make a lot of the stuff that I want to make. So you can see I'm using as, as much of this sheet as I possibly can um, and trying to reduce my waste as much as possible. But um, one thing I would like to do with this table is uh, this plate right here. Uh, you've got your spacing here. So this spacing actually sets your height of this bar um, to a certain level. And one thing I'm seeing is if you see right here this rub mark right through here that's coming off of that so it's coming through here and rubbing on this and this is eighth inch plate so i don't think you're supposed to actually do this but a lot of times i'll sort of slide something that's too long for my table because when i pick up the steel it's just whatever they have so i can't go over there and say hey i want it to be four foot only um and a lot of times it's easier to cut this way than it is to cut this way uh, on something like this. So um, I'm thinking about making some new plates similar to this that pick this up maybe three quarters of an inch or maybe even an inch. Because I've got plenty of travel in this thing and I can actually adjust that up or down if I need to to sort of compensate for moving this. So uh, to me, it may be smart for Crossfire to take and redo these plates to where it picks this up a little bit. Uh, another thing I'm thinking about doing is making a piece of aluminum in my mill that clamps around this surface right here. On the torch, comes out exactly one inch and has a little laser pointer that mounts in here. I bought some on Amazon. Sorry, I'm draining my table. Um, to where if I want to pinpoint something, I can come out with that laser pointer and put the laser pointer exactly where I want it and then just move in one inch. You know, so I could see exactly where stuff is or if I want to test and see if this surface is straight, I can just have a laser hit that and just jog all the way through here and if the laser's up here instead of down here i know that it's crooked so i can you know point the laser here run it all the way down and if it say here i can just push the plate up to meet the laser and i know this is in line with my cut right now i'm just sort of visually getting it close here and jogging it over and jogging it back until i get this straight but it would be kind of cool to have something that would sort of do that if I wanted it to. Um, and I thought about making a guide that I could clamp here that has the same distance here and here to where I could butt something up against there if I wanted to as well. But I think the laser pointer would be the most useful because that would also help me find my edge on here. So um, I've got to say uh, out of all of the tools in my shop, this is probably my favorite. Um, I've got more money in my CNC mill, and I, I love that thing. It's fantastic to have that capability in my CNC lathe. And But this machine, uh, if, if you want to just do fab work and, and make bracketry and things like that, you cannot beat this. Uh, it's, it is just awesome. Having all the other stuff is a great complement to it, but if I had to pick one machine to take with me somewhere if i had to move somewhere or whatever this would be it this machine is awesome um wouldn't mind having a four by eight and i'm hoping crossfire might may come out with a like a four by eight conversion kit or something at some point or i may just build my own uh, i do have a cnc plasma table and cnc mill and cnc lathe so <laughs> if i can't build something like this with those components something is, is really wrong with me <laughs> but everything works really well this plasma cutter 
Uh, we have a hypertherm at the office, and this one actually cuts better. And, you know, on their software here, your uh, see, I am at 587 um, pierces and one hour and seven minutes of cutting on the same consumables for this thing. And they are, um, I forget what these are called now. I can't think of the word, but it's like a European standard or something. A lot of your Chinese machines use those consumables. And the cut quality is actually pretty good. So here's some of the stuff that I've cut. I, my speed may be a little bit more than it should be, but you can see a slight angle to the cut. But very useful. Um, these are going to be bottom dies for uh, my little press brake project that I'm getting started on. So I'll stack these together, use the two holes here, for quarter inch rod to cinch it up together and pull it up tight once I clean these up they've got a bunch of slag and stuff on them now so they're not gonna stay together very well but once I cinch them up make sure everything's squared up then I can weld through these little troughs that I made here on the side to kind of pull everything together as well so that will be used with this thing so I'm going to make uh, something that goes in here. I'll probably have to drop this and pick the whole thing up off the floor to where this is up higher um, because I'm going to have to have it open, you know, enough to have that much space between them. So here's your gooseneck die that will go in there like so and bend stuff this is for mainly thicker material um, and this is some parts for a grinder stand that I'm making um, but you can see even the holes are it looks way worse than it is so if you look on this side that's probably a little bit better representation of the holes so uh, that I think that's a a little bit, I think that's a point two, or maybe a quarter inch hole, I can't remember now. But, you know, for something that can take scrap metal and make brackets like this, and look at that finish, that's eighth inch material, mild steel. Uh, that's just fantastic. Um, so, this is part of the bracket. Now, I didn't quite get my spacing right. The idea was this would sit in this little slot and go all the way through when I could weld from the back side. But I didn't quite get that wide enough that I'll still make it work. So my next revision of these will be a little bit wider slots. But this is a ceiling mount bracket. So I want to mount something up here off of these um, things here. I can take this, uh, let's see if I can find a bare spot to put this on, and it will go and mount right there on the surface up here. And because that's at an angle, it's not um, level, this gives me the ability to take a piece of one inch by one inch tubing, drill a hole that's one inch apart, have a bolt that goes through the part here and then this allows me to adjust for my angle um, so I'm making some more stuff to organize my shop like this right here so I'm gonna make a few more of these and not only will I have a wall mount option like that I'm gonna have an option to where I can mount it from the ceiling so as you can see, I've got stuff everywhere on the walls already. So what I'm thinking is like, say, right here, drop down. I could have grinders or um, you know, these hanging right there where I need them. So, see, I made these plates to where I can take these clamps 
and they'll just sit like that and hang. And I can, they'll be on a lazy season, which I actually just ordered four more of those to make some more of these. And then I'm probably going to do away with these. And oh, that was a screw up. But see, then those will hang there so I can put all my air holes, or, or air holes, air tools uh, in these little holes here and hang them. So, um, and I'll be able to, again, to hang this stuff from the ceiling if I so choose. And that gives me more real estate in my building and do a lot more with them. So if anybody wants some of this stuff, because I've, I've not seen anybody actually sell anything remotely close to this. And to me, this is a fantastic way to organize this kind of stuff. Uh, any bracketry, anything like that, I'd be happy to help you. Um, if you are a neat freak like I am <laughs> about organizing this stuff. So if somebody wants some of this stuff, I'm actually going to probably make a few extras of these and stick them on eBay or Amazon or Craigslist or something like that and just see if anybody would buy some of them and maybe fund some of my toys. <laughs> so anyway, I just wanted to make this video. This thing is great. Uh, I really cannot complain. And one of the things that I did with this setup too is uh, these are just air hoses with quarter inch barbed fittings up there and I just drain into this tank. Uh, this was like 75 bucks from Agri Supply, a little cheap pump from Harbor Freight and I just wired this up to where I've got a switch where I can turn that on and off whenever I want to pump um, water into this thing. And what I'll probably end up doing is putting one of like a little box here to power that and make maybe a something that goes down here that will hold this and put casters on this that I can drop down. So if I want to move it, uh, I'll, I may be able to, I don't know if I'll do that or not, to be honest. I'm, I'm about to build another part of my building. So uh, this will just permanently go in there eventually. But I, if you want to get into CNC stuff, this was my first real um, jump into CNC and I can't tell you enough how much time it saves for you know people that want to do some of the mess that I get into if you want to make something build stuff this thing uh, you know you can you can make multiples you know there's a bracket there's the same bracket there's the same bracket or here and here um, easily make uh, and and not necessarily mass produced but you could if you wanted to so you know I'm making multiples of the same part in uh, 30 seconds you know you've got a nice even bolt pattern easily done <clears throat> repeatable every single time uh, you really just can't beat this uh, so if you are on the fence and you see this thing for sale I got it I think for 2500 when it was like right after they introduced it. I think it's a little bit more than that now, but it's worth every dime. I really can't complain. It's a little bit bumpy road when I first bought it because they took forever to ship this thing. I mean, it was like eight months, I think, after I dropped, for me, 2500 bucks, which was a lot of money. Plus, I upgraded to the torch height controller for another 400 bucks, which, again, was worth every dime. Um... And I had that thing, I think, three days after I ordered it, sitting there, waiting on this table. It was killing me. So, uh, but once I got it, uh, it took me a night to put it together. Uh, really wasn't that hard. Did it all by myself, you know, without any help in maybe three hours. There, there really wasn't much to it. Um, you know, you just want to be careful about making sure you get all this stuff squared up correctly and and so far, like I said, it's it's been actually more accurate than our table at the office that we paid $30,000 for. And the software, surprisingly, is in a lot of ways more fully featured than what we have at the office. One of the things that I'd like to see with the software is 
With this one, I have to go scroll through the G-code here and find a line. So you can see as I pick different lines, that little dot's moving around. So that's where this line is in that program. So then I can go here and say, hey, I want to start from this loop or start from this line. And it'll start cutting from there. The one at the office, uh, although if I had to pick, I would pick this software over what we have at the office any day of the week. But if you stop something at some point, you can just simply resume from whatever line. And it has, you You were at line, you know, 430 automatically. So whenever you stopped, you could just hit resume and go there. And it just immediately goes back to where you were. Where this one, I have to sort of hunt through and find where I was. And sometimes that takes a little while. But it doesn't have the scale and rotate. It doesn't have the straight cut feature that this has. Um, the THC is a little bit easier to work with. The overrides make a lot more sense. The layout of this just makes a lot more sense. And the fact that it keeps up with my pierces and my torch time. So I can kind of get an idea of, of my you know, consumable life, which I think I may need to <laughs> replace what's in there. That's a lot of pierces. Um, 587 and an hour of cutting and it, like I said it's still cutting pretty good so I generally try to you know push this stuff as hard as I can oh there's another piece <clears throat> but um, again I would recommend it any day of the week and you know at some point I might even use it to make some money uh, I've made it Made tons of prototypes for work. Um, when our machine was messed up, I would come home and, and, and use this to make a lot of stuff and get products out the door a lot of different times. And it's been a fantastic piece of equipment. So um, favorite tool in the shop, hands down. And, you know, like I said, just being able to make stuff like this, like this bracket to hold that grinder which you don't see that size grinders a lot on this kind of stuff they're up most people make the little doodads for these things um there we go so being able to make that or these lights uh these were thrown away and somebody gave them to me that dug them out of a landfill but they are incredibly bright and that bracket which is kind of wasteful that's a big old bracket and i should have done that a little bit differently um i've got it kind of canted to where i when i turn it here it's kind of facing into where i've got a car that i'm working on or something um, but one of the next things i'm going to do is attach here come back have a i've got some six by six tubing that'll go to the floor here so i'm gonna have to move this move this stuff because I'll have those tubes um, square tubing six by six by quarter inch thick square tubing that's going to go here and here um, and I've got some I think it's like 10 inch C channel that I'm going to go through here with and then I'm going to have a I beam that rolls across here so I'll make a couple of roller things that go here and here and basically I'll have this hanging up there no, an electric uh, hoist that I can just, you know, grab and roll it this way, roll it this way. So if I'm wanting to pull a motor out of a truck or something, I can pull it in, take the hood off, grab it, pick it up, move it over, drop it down to a engine stand or, or whatever, uh, nice and easy. So I also got this thing. This is going to go in my truck, it's a little 12 volt hydraulic pump. Um, that I'm going to hook up to a few little things that I've got there so I can make life a little bit easier. So anyway, so here's the latest stuff that I've been making and doing. But this table in particular, I just wanted to let people know, um, again, I can't be a bigger fan. Uh, the things that I would probably change... I think it would have been a good idea for them to lift this up a little higher so you could put a sheet through here without it rubbing this um, carrier here. I think that would have made more sense. 
Uh, honestly, their instructions say to put silicone here. They should have said, hey, weld this together if you can. They shouldn't have said, just put silicone here. To me, it would have made so much more sense when I was putting this together to just TIG weld this seam, and I never would have had a problem with this thing. Um, why in the world they did it this way? I get you save on shipping. Uh, I would have paid a hundred and something extra dollars to get an actual water table that didn't have this. Um, biggest downfall to this thing. You can see the water leaking through here. I have to keep filling that thing up on a regular basis. Um, and at some point I'm going to take it off and either remake the whole table or something like that. What I thought about doing is um, right here, making something that butts up against here that I weld in and the same thing on the other side to where you can actually take this table off if you wanted to and just pick it up. But it sort of registers against something here. Uh, I want to weld something onto it where I've got, instead of a ground clamp, just kind of clamped on there. You can see how rusty that thing's gotten. Um, it would be nice to have something, just a lug that you can go connect to. And I also thought about doing not only that, but something like this. So have a lug that that goes to and then a short section of, of ground cable to where like, if I need a better connection, I can just you know stick this over here or, or whatever um, and get a, a better connection. So anyway, so I don't know if that helps anybody, but this machine has been fantastic. Um, but anyway, there you go. Have a good day. Bye.